Uh, I'm David Sandlands, uh, Principal Solutions Architect at uh, Puppet by Perforce. Um, this talk is um, about the 2023 State of DevOps Report, Platform Engineering Edition. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the State of DevOps Report, uh, why this year we've kind of focused on platform engineering, um, some details about how the report was uh, performed and gathered, and uh, then running through some of the core findings of the, rep the report. Um, I'll also kind of chip in with um, some of my own experience and background. Um, so, and, and just to get, kind of give some intros, for those not familiar with Puppet, uh, Puppet is an infrastructure configuration company um, and a compliance tool set who's been released, um, first released in 2005, um, with both enterprise and open source products. Um, and with a strong history in the DevOps community as a contributor and influencer. Um, myself, uh, for my sins, I did 13 years in banking at the uh, NatWest Royal Bank of Scotland in the UK, working um, in their historic, very old school platforms. Um, hearing a very sad description of somebody as being an old school person because they used to work in Solaris and AIX, and having to nod my head and say, yep, I did that too. Um, and more recently, kind of going through their digital transformation um, as they went to kind of an IaaS platform. Um, so, the State of DevOps Report, um, launched in 2013 and released annually. Uh, it's a survey looking to ask questions about how organizations are adopting DevOps. Um, 40,000 people have been surveyed since its initial inception. Uh, what we found is that um, after kind of period of 2013 where there was initially a lot of progress, over the last four reports we've kind of found that only, we've only had growth from kind of 10 to 18 percent um, of organizations going from a kind of middling evolution of DevOps to uh, highly evolved. And the majority, 80 percent, um, are kind of remaining in this middle level. Um, and actually, in fact, kind of DevOps has become so prevalent with many of these organizations, they're not even kind of talking about it as a term anymore. Um, that it's just the way they work and the way they've got used to working. Um, so as, as kind of part of this, we've chosen not to kind of do the same general high-level DevOps reports. And we've tried to focus in on some of the, some of the common themes we see in the organizations who have reached um, highly evolved state. Um, and one of the patterns we saw was um, uh, platform engineering. Because uh, what we'd seen in last year's uh, research was simply adopting automation and infrastructure code does not create a highly evolved organization. Um, a focus on improved organizational structure, uh, team identities, and interaction um, are the most kind of common attributes of highly evolved DevOps organizations. Um, and that led to a clear pattern of uh, platform engineering in that frame, um, helping with those things. Um, this doesn't mean you have to adopt platform team models to, to uh, be good at DevOps. Rather, it's just um, having that sort of well-defined approach um, seems to help organizations to kind of path to succeed with DevOps, uh, particularly in the enterprise. Um, and you know, to kind of show this, to talk about the numbers, what we found was with platform engineering, 65% of uh, those who were towards the high end um, of DevOps evolution were using self-service platforms, compared to only 40% towards the lower end. So going forward for the State of DevOps report, expect to see a lot more reports like this, where we focus in on particular topics, uh, rather than our kind of um, you know, historically more general. So for, for this year's report, the Platform Engineering Edition, um, Platform Engineering has obviously suffered from being a buzzword, uh, but we wanted to kind of zone in as to actually what it meant to organizations, because just in the same way, DevOps can mean very different things to different people. Um, we've um, wanted to kind of zone in. So we had 408, 438 respondents respond to the survey. Uh, it was done in two ways. Um, we did it via a kind of snowballing method, whereby we put out a survey uh, via um, social media, web, and via our partners, and then via word of mouth, it snowballed like a you know like a snowball rolling down a hill. Um, 
We also used our um, um, a kind of professional grouping um, who were kind of an independent non-profit who provide kind of expertise and opinions so that our kind of, um, you know, our bias in terms of who we were likely to get to fill out the survey wouldn't kind of uh, completely show through. And we also had a grouping of um, those who didn't use platforms to kind of provide a control group on opinions. Um, the survey was conducted between the 14th of September and the 25th of October 2022. Um, unsurprisingly, the main industry to respond was technology. Um, and I'm hoping that's a nice big screen, so hopefully you can see you know, the, a breakdown of those plenty of organisations from government to finance, um, to uh, you know, education and so on. Um, varying sizes of uh, companies, you know, from smaller companies to larger. Um, and in terms of the platform team role, it was obviously key not just to have the opinions of people who ran platform teams, because they're obviously going to have a good opinion of um, their platform. Um, and, you know, a mix of uh, different team responsibilities. Um, I, I appreciate team names are a bit strange these days, so plenty of people are on teams that are just called DevOps now. Um, but yes, a good mix of different teams from kind of traditional infrastructure teams to teams involved in transformation. Um, so the kind of initial findings, uh, most platform teams are still new. Um, only 19% of respondents reported that the platform teams were established more than five years ago. Um, I think this is kind of from the thing we see that large scale platform teams up until recently have been predominantly the place of um, new big tech companies. And despite how it kind of feels in the industry, you know, they just make up a kind of small sector of uh, enterprise firms. So, you know, for most now is the time to adopt and kind of looking at um, how people felt about, you know, had they adopted platform teams at the right time? Overwhelmingly, people feel it's the right time. 23% um, saying it's too late and only a very small uh, section saying they felt it was too early. Why platform engineering? So, you know, when we look at like what led to the creation of a platform team for your organization, it's not too surprising that um, increasing the speed of delivery uh, comes out as the, the, the highest um, point, um, followed by the need to scale. Um, and then, you know, looking at um, engineers taking too long to um, it's spending too much time kind of working on the tools rather than actually their job and features. Because I think that was something we commonly saw was, particularly in large organizations, you know, the, lots of teams were opened up to the freedom to develop what tools they were working in. Uh, but that just kind of gave them a kind of bigger cognitive load to try to work out, you know, wh what they should be working on. And in some organizations, like my own background in banking, there was plenty of teams that didn't realistically have the skills to do that well. Um, and, uh, you know, further down the scale, we also see there in terms of um, consultancy and uh, leadership requests, which is probably coming from the point of uh, platform engineering being very prominent in a lot of marketing buzzwords just now. Um, looking at the key goals, um, seeing that problem solving is the highest probably reflects how platform teams aim to prevent other teams from having to keep repeatedly solving common problems. Um, and the rest of the answers can really be seen around enabling the users of the platforms with education and empowerment of developers and product teams featuring prominently at 47 and 40 percent and 46 percent answering uh, to promote best practices within organizations. Um, I think, you know, th this kind of people centric approach naturally follows previous DevOps implementations, you know, where enterprises were too focused on the tech and the tools. Uh, and kind of stalled in their DevOps journey um, as they kind of struggled with um, the various silos of people. So going a bit more into purpose and structure, um, what capabilities does a self-service platform offer? Um, offered by the platform is the, the provisioning of infrastructure for developers is key with deployment, uh, operation monitoring and security being identified. Um, because I think if you look at kind of, you know, plenty of people said to me, you know, platforms aren't new, there's been platforms, you know, there was a, you know, there was a platform at the bank when I was deploying AIX, 
But you know, all it did was simply that one step of getting you an AIX machine configured to you know, a, a specification. Um, the, the, the key thing is developers need to get something that's actually usable at the end, not something where they have to keep stepping through different sections and get, you know, going to one team to get DNS, going to another team to get their OS, and other teams to get the monitoring and pseudo rules set up. Um, if I'm focusing purely, purely on a kind of provisioning example. Um, so, you know, that, that's just not sufficient. Teams must be able to deliver value to their users. Um, and, um, you know, the majority of respondents are um, reporting that, the, um, in terms of the number of platforms, they're reporting that um, uh, they have between two and four, uh, while 30% have um, five or more. And this, kind of, to us, indicates that platforms are emerging from different parts of the organization. Uh, and we kind of see this, that they can emerge in different ways. Uh, organically, from uh, volume stream developers, uh, looking to share their solutions with each other. Um, from particularly advanced and capable operations teams who have kind of high levels of trust within the organization. And also sometimes when you have um, um, progressive management who uh, look to kind of move the organization in a transformation. Uh, we, we don't believe that anyone should be trying to force one platform to rule them all. Uh, you know, we think the kind of focus should come from, you know, exactly those kind of teams we, we talked about there. Um, so, talking about how centralized they are, um, to be clear, when we're saying centralized, we're meaning whether um, if a platform's uh, centralized, we're talking about different business units using a platform together. Um, so 82% of platform teams are centralized, um, and this pattern of centralization seems to be increasing over time, with 52% reporting an increase of that centralization. Um, and 36% of those who are already using a centralized approach reporting that uh, even more centralization would be better. Uh, with decentralized teams, we, we see that 37% believe it would perform better if it was, they were actually more centralized. And to be really clear here, both users and operators um, are giving more or less the same answer in this area. So it's obviously not just um, a platform team saying it would be all better if everyone just came to my platform. Um, now, there's always going to be some need for decentralization. There's going to kind of be legality requirements, whether that be a kind of you know, a business unit in a certain region, or whether, you know, if you're in a finance organization and your traders can't work on the same platform as your retail bank, you know, but, you know, the general pattern we see is for decentralization. Um, in terms of the benefits, I think this is the thing that took me back the most, um, because when I think of my experience of trying to introduce colleagues to things coming from, you know, exactly these kind of conferences and these kind of new ideas, there tends to be a high level of cynicism, um, particularly when something's been a buzzword. Um, but we see that 93% of respondents are reporting that the platform team is a step in the right direction. 94% um, agree the concept has helped their firms better realize DevOps. Um, and you know, the impact on velocity has been surprising as well. 68% agreed it increased their velocity. Um, what we did find was that this uh, confidence and improvement was better over time. Uh, more than 53% of firms that had been practicing platform engineering for more than three years reported their speed increased a great deal, uh, while it was just 35% for firms who'd implemented uh, less than three years. So, you know, again, to highlight, creating this level of change uh, in a relatively short period is very impressive. If we look at a lot of organizations who, you know, went through kind of their general DevOps approach, many of them spent five to t or 10 years even trying to adopt DevOps practices with very um, little success in some organizations. So, looking at how confident teams are uh, in continuing to meet their goals, we do see uh, the longevity of the platform has directly correlates to that confidence. Um, and given how cynical our industry can be and how cyclical things can be, when you're dealing with, as I said, something that's been very commonly a buzzword, um, we do find it noticeable that still a very, you know, the majority are, uh, you know, 
somewhat confident or very confident, even less than three years. But seeing you know the switch um, to completely confident of 27 percent over three years, um, you know, and a total of you know confident or very confident of 73 um, percent, just kind of shows that the platform builds over time. Um, <coughs> looking at you know whose needs are served most by platforms. Um, you know, it's very pleasing to see 30 percent of comp you know see the whole company is served best. 29% um, see developer teams, which is exactly what you'd hope with platforms typically um, looking to serve um, your, you know, your IDPs. Um, and what's interesting is, um, <coughs> excuse me, the, the percentage you think it serves the whole company increases, you know, wh again, when it's been over three years. One thing kind of, you know, some people maybe worry about is in terms of seeing um, infrastructure teams as just a kind of small chunk of that. But, you know, what we, we do expect that because, you know, ultimately it's not really to service the infrastructure teams. We're wanting the platform to service our developers um, and, you know, the infrastructure teams kind of feed into that process. Um, you know, because we've never run infrastructure for its own sake. You know, ultimately it's been about getting on the, the um, services and uh, tools on top of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So looking at some of the kind of problems people are reporting with the platforms, um, I think a large part of it can be about seeing setting expectations um, and creating awareness of the platform. Um, you know, one of the things we kind of see, the largest percentage here is um, the cycle slower than people expected um, and resistance to adoption of the platform. Uh, and I think both those things kind of really focus down on getting that buy-in and also creating, you know, you know, a lot of companies are not very good at actually be making people aware of what their SLAs and SLOs are around their platforms. And you know, I myself, when we went from quite a rudimentary uh, platform to, you know, a, a, a truly platform engineering platform. We made that mistake, and the first major outage uh, caused a huge problem, despite the fact it was well within uh, our expected error rates. Um, so, you know, we'll kind of come into talking about how product owners can help with that in the next few slides. Um, but, you know, a lot of what we see in terms of the priorities for the next 12 months looks to kind of address that point of, um, creating awareness about the platform uh, and educating and enabling uh, users of the platform and developers. Oh, that's not what I was going to do. So, you know, coming into the kind of needed uh, product management skills, um, you know, when it comes to putting the right people with the right skills in place to actually do platform engineering, um, most respondents seem to have prior their priorities in order. When we asked about the most important skills a product manager needs to drive a successful platform, we learned that um, platform product managers need to be great communicators. Um, they need a knack of problem solving. Uh, they must be able to foster collaboration across teams. Uh, and they've got to be able to turn um, complex user requests into core requirements can fit a platform. And they need a significant understanding of internal customers. So, you know, we tend to find organizations who try and pull someone completely external from their organization to perform this role can often struggle to understand the internal politics and complexities um, of that organization. Um, so in terms of going more into the challenges, 66% um, of respondents strongly or somewhat agreed their platform engineering team has a product owner who evangelizes the products and services. And this would be a huge worry for us, is that um, without that individual um, uh, doing that evangelism and you know, helping that education and um, working with customers to establish the needs of the platform, as we see the young platforms grow, they, you know, they could easily come into trouble. Um, now, doo -doo -doo. An interesting thing comes is 48% of respondents agree their senior management, their organizations do not understand the value of platforms 
And even uh, a similar degree, the respondents themselves say that 51% um, are saying they're equally confused about the concept. So again, I think this you know, points to the importance of the product manager who should be in there to you know, help this understanding both within their own platform team and you know, within uh, senior stakeholders and leaders. <coughs> so let's get this. Again, just to kind of hit that point, treating your platform as a product is a key tenant of uh, modern platform engineering. Uh, while this is generally well understood, the data tells us that organizations are underinvesting in those product management skills. And one of the core problems I've seen is when people feel like the platform's well established, that's often the point where they'll feel like, well, you know, we've invested all this money now, the platform seems stable, we don't need this product manager. And that, you know, that will eventually kind of hurt the long term future of the platform, uh, you know, as nobody is there to kind of continue the evolution of the platform. So, you know, to kind of, you know, summarize up, you know, there's no room for complacency. Um, young platforms can expect rapid growth as they're evangelized and as people are kind of getting a taste for self-service. Um, industry and company cycles can affect this focus on product. It's very easy for these kind of soft skills to be uh, viewed as easy to make redundant in downturns. Um, and you know, we, we kind of see the key thing is platforms will fail if the only focus is the technology. Uh, you know, so again, just I know I've said it so many times, but you know, the platform has to be treated as a product, not a project. Um, and I can think back to you know, the bad old days of platforms when, you know, even doing something as simple as going from, you know, rel eight to rel nine was in fact a project, and you had to kind of mug someone coming in to kind of say your project's going to have to pay for us to deliver this. Um, and probably because I've just seen the meme so much and it's a little bit painful, DevOps is not dead. Um, platform engineering has kind of been, um, you know, somewhat hyped in terms of that because it's been so successful and ha had such a big impact. Some people being complete, you know, claiming it's, uh, you know, it's, it uh, supplants uh, DevOps. But you know, for me, platform engineering is just another kind of um, theory that's um, due to success it's going to become a part of DevOps in the way that you know, Agile and other things have been borrowed into DevOps practices. Um, I, you know, for, for me, I'll be interested in future DevOps reports to see the sustainability of these platforms. You know, with so many only kind of under three years old, it'll be interesting to see how people are coping with growth, how people are coping to, with you know, changing demands, and whether people are continuing to keep the awareness long after you know, potential uh, transformation programs have ended. So with that, um, you can get a full copy of the report um, with more of the graphs and more of the information to read at your leisure. Um, so thanks to the sponsors of our report. Uh, thank you today for listening. Uh, and are there any questions? No worries. Uh, also, if anyone has any thoughts of things that should be in future State of DevOps reports, uh, let us know. Uh, and we, we are over at the uh, puppet stand over in the, the area. And uh, just thanks for your time.